Congratulations, guys. A uh, question for you, Franco. Um, a few weeks ago, you sat at Ellis Park and you were, let's say, a little glum after that performance. What have you done to sort of re-energize the group after that? Because obviously you needed the final surge and you pulled it off. You know, I, 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 if you look at the game, there was two decisions that had gone against us, that two offside, tries, offside penalties that should have been in our favour, where they scored two tries from. One of them it was 14-8, and the other one it was 14 with 15-14. So, um, if you look at the game in, in its whole, we were actually not, not bad on the day. So, a lot of positives on the Monday and the Tuesday when we got back there. And so, look, this is what we did. The scoreline wasn't against us, but rugby works like that. If you don't take your opportunities or you don't make the best of them, or if you make the best of them, that is what the scoreline is going to be. So, we took a lot of positives from there and uh, never tried to, you know, to, with, uh, I always, in one game of the season, will go bad. As much as one game will be good. So if you throw the best game and the biggest game out, you get the consistency um, across the park. So that was what we were um, heading into. We wanted consistency in performance. And you know, the boys fronted up. I think the Lions did us a big favour that night. So um, we took a lot of learnings from it, but also a lot of enthusiasm um, to bounce back off it. Yeah. Franco, congratulations. <coughs> Crystal, guys, congratulations. Uh, Franco, just where did you see there was a turning point of the game? Um, was it when Elric dropped that ball and you guys got the penalty, which led to your more try? Um, and then for for Carl, you guys were it was a bit of a mirror of of the Munster game in the fact that you guys conceded quite a few penalties in that first half. Just how did you guys get the guys together and you know, obviously to keep keep their minds focused? And, and where do you see you guys getting on top there? Yeah, obviously, I think the score before after was important. How we got to that wasn't uh, wasn't important for me, but the fact that we, when the opportunity arose, we scored. We had, had up to then six six entries into the twenty two, and we convert none. So it was an important um, important situation. But with that stat going into the half time talk was easy. You know, we knew that um, that we were doing things right. We just were completing it, and then a penalty count was against us, and now calls were answer that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, look, I think, like you say, you know, it was a similar script to last week. And I think, you know, the fact that we've come through that um, gives boys a lot of a lot of belief in those moments, you know, that that you've got a plan that works and that if you stick to that, um, you can get the results. And then, to be honest, it, it, it's guys like Matty that, that stood up, you know, the way he did before half time, you know, a couple of really big carries, um, you know, that kind of um, reignite that fire and boys that, that, that get that belief going and, and you know, think get, get the ball rolling again, they can get something done. And then I think that try before half time was was really crucial as Franco, Franco says and then we came in um, at half time and again like Franco says spoke about our process um, you know a process that we really believe in and, and really trust in and knew that um, you know we couldn't let the, the scoreboard or the, or the time pressure get to us you just have to you got to focus in on that moment and once you've once you've ticked off that moment you go to the next moment and that was the way we, we went at the second half. <coughs> I asked the hypothetical question yesterday about what it would mean to, to win so close to home against with the team and the, the place that you've made home. How does it feel similar? Ah, oh, confidence words to be honest. I think to to be able to share the final year with, with this group, um, you know, feel like family, feel like brothers and sisters, um, you know, was incredible. But then to have my own family here, um, you know, have mum and dad here. Um, I had some really close mates, you know, from school who I, I sat in these stands and, and watched games with. They were here supporting me today and um, I think just that that sense of that sense of belonging and, and where we've come from um, just yeah makes us incredibly special. Um, we think that every Monday and Tuesday, Franco speaking, if you're in there drinking whiskey, um, how uh, talk us through that process and you know how it feels to have finished off that journey as well. Again, I think um, you know if you look at where we were 24 months ago, Franco came in and I think the biggest thing he had to do was was to get us to believe and, and give us a sense of direction and. You, t- you know, you think back to drinking whiskey out of a, a polystyrene cup on, on one of his first days. Um, you know, I think there were a lot of boys that, that thought he was insane, to be honest. But I think the consistency and the, and the conviction, you know, about how he goes about his business and, and what he believes in, um, you know, I think that gave us a real sense of direction and that got boys following him in, in behind. And, and, yeah, now you're looking back at, you know, drinking whiskey out of those cups and all of a sudden he doesn't seem so crazy. Just one for my for me, my, you came in to the squad on the back of the you know that that great team that had won in 2015. This, this group's been desperate to write its own story. What, what, what does that feel like now that you you kind of joined them on the on the walls of Scotland? Yeah, it feels feels incredible. As you said, I've probably been in Glasgow what nine years now. Um, there's a big mural just above our gym with um, pictures. I think it's Richie Byrne and Hoggy, um, 
Chris Vassaro, Tommy Seymour, um, all walking to the stand after the game, and that's something that we come in look at every single day. Um, and yeah, to sort of come in after the, you know a winning season in 2015, um, to come so close in 2019 at home, um, this just feels yeah, it feels in- in- incredible. To sort of be in, a, in, in and amongst that sort of trophy winning season. Uh, congratulations, guys. Um, Kyle, the, the coach says he was pretty calm uh, towards the end there. How, how are you feeling, though? Because, you know, towards the end there, you had a, a try disallowed for basically just a, a tackle that was a split second too early and then and then the yellow card. I mean, on, on another day, that could have gone the other way as well. Were, were you kind of feeling that, you know, maybe maybe things are turning against us. Yeah, how did you get over that? Yeah, no, again, um, you know, I think credit to the boys. They were they were really calm, and you know, we've got we've got leaders all over the pitch. Um, you know, the, the message came on pretty early. You know, when that team review came, and um, you know, it was it was again it was it was tactical things. You know, about you know going into defence of, of you know thirteen and one. Um, you know, if we did get a yellow card, and I think that just kind of. You know that kept boys from wondering about you know what if what if what if that just that just kept boys on task kept boys on focusing on what we needed to do and um again i just i can't give enough credit to our, our big boys up front you know the way they fronted up in those malls and in, in those big d sets um you know in the last 10, 10 15 minutes i feel like they really really broke the back of it and made sure that we we came home safely and uh frank obviously the the mall how you guys mauled and and how you guys defended the mall obviously uh a massive part of the victory tonight, but your line out as well and, and the way you contested um on the Bulls board especially, um how, how pleased were you with that? You know, there's a lot of work going in there um in the week. We actually lost them way too many line outs tonight to be honest. Um out of out of um uh out of well, character I suppose. But yeah there is a lot of work I mean our compliments got uh Cummings and both him and Richie we've got a line out board as we call them and the Always work hard at it. Um, yeah, we do a lot of work on opposition teams, and um, it paid off. Yes. So, Franco, um, Kyle mentioned calm. You're down on the road to Munster. Yellow cards come flying out. Team remains calm. You get the business done. Tonight, you come out here and you're down 13 nothing in the first half, and the Bulls put the pressure on you. They keep coming down the pitch. What's the key here? Have you instilled discipline and common in this team and they just have the confidence going to do it? Because you also mentioned at the end of the game, your nerves were fine because you were comfortable the team was going to get done. So what's the key to keep this team so calm? Because that seems to have been a key component of the last two games. Yeah, I think it's mutual trust. You know, we've uh, started <clears throat> our, our theme for the preseason was trust. You know, a lot of the boys, um, um, we decided last year to, um, you know, start late for the preseason. Um, still not too late. We stuck to our normal program. Everybody else started by earlier. We stuck to the to the eight week, six week, six and a half week programs, eight week program. It depends on what we did. But um, so and that they came into the into the building um, physically prepared, and that that was their buy in into the companies uh, in our in our little company. You know they they and therefore the trust that they've they've earned and we've earned from each other allow us to you know to concentrate on the task instead of what we want and uh, you know i think that is the compliment to the boys again um the culture of the club the, the management the, the coaching group um nigel and pete they they they, they 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 bring calmness we're organized we know what we want so i think all of those ingredients without this is not bragging this is just explaining um leads to uh, mutual belief and mutual and mutual trust so i think if i must sum it up i think that's what it is congrats all good now it's all one i'm sorry congrats guys um Frank, i know yesterday you didn't want to give me what the game plan was but um, if i were to ask you now where would you say you you feel you won the game Oh, look, we were, we were going to meet, meet them physically. Um, I know what they want to bully you in, yeah. I've had personal experience from it, so they want to bully you physically. And uh, I thought we, oh, I knew if we front up physically and we apply pressure instead of absorbing it, we can get a, give ourselves the best chance. 
Um, we wanted to have a little bit more width in our game, which we got with uh, Hugh Jones' try in the end, um, which we didn't get to, and it was more because we didn't win the lineouts um, as we should. We're always going to take them on, um, you know, for a bit of a saying, always going to take them on where they think they're strong. That was in the, in the, in the set piece. So, um, and then obviously we knew that if we defensively front up, we will we'll take the initiative away. And, and then obviously the, the kicking game was important. You know, three guys that um, if we're going to give kick it too long and too far uh, to them, we will allow them too much time on the ball. And uh, we tried to obviously take that space away. So, yeah, that in, a, in short, um, I can't go into the detail, but that's more or less what it, what, what it was. Um, without without sort of um, demeaning whatever other coaching roles you've you've had in your career, obviously some some sterling ones. What's it like to sort of travel halfway around the world and and still need to sort of come to Loftus to <laughs> to get it to get a biggish win? Look, look, we, we plan and we prep and we convince. But the way the players locked up tonight, the great great must have been they were brilliant in believing. We said we're not going to use the um, travel as an excuse. So halfway around the world travel. We said we're not going to talk about the altitude. We didn't come up in any conversation this week. And not that it was forced, it was just, we knew that it was, we just have to act on what we want. If and uh, So the compliments it with the team, the players tonight, they, they've uh, didn't look for excuses. They kept on applying themselves. And I think they, they now banned the myth of that the fact that the altitude changes the outcome. It, if they are prepared to work hard the whole season, you give yourself the best chance in an important game. And last one, um, Carl, I think six, seven years ago, you played in this for Greek was in the Super Sport Rugby Challenge. I don't know if you still remember those fast line um, fields that you used to play in. Um, just from a career sort of um, significance um, point of view for you, what's it like to be sitting here? I know you've played for Scotland before, which is obviously bigger, but just talk us through the significance of this moment in the context of where your career has been before. Again, I, th I think I said yesterday, you know, having played the Super Sport Challenge or Varsity Cup here at Loftus and then, you know, coming back with, with Glasgow, you know, life is a funny way of of going in circles and, and making you reflect. And I think when I reflect, I just, um, you know, the incredible support I've had, um, you know, from family, friends and, and coaches through my career has been incredible. Um, and I think just, you know, moving halfway across the world, I think I, j I just can't thank the people, the, the players and, and the people in Glasgow enough, you know, for for making it feel like home, for making, you know, us feel a part of the family, um, you know, and I think that's what that's what drives you when you when you go out on the pitch on a, on a, a game like tonight. And um, yeah, just incredibly grateful for, for the opportunity tonight.